This is Solar Man. I'm very excited to teach you how an axial flux motor works. And also I hope you can do it yourself, build one for your term project. And if you're interested, you can find also files in the future that you can download to build one for yourself. So please share with your classmates who could likewise be interested and subscribe to my Solar Man channel where you can find a lot of my inventions that would interest you. Now, this is an axial flux motor. What you have here is, this is the stator, and this is the rotor of the axial flux motor that I would teach you to build. I built this for my personal air conditioner. Now, I'm gonna tell you the differences between a radial flux motor and an axial flux motor here. Now, this is the axle. So, an axial flux motor means that the magnetic flux actually comes into the page where this axle is coming out of the page. And a radial flux motor have the magnetic flux that is in the radius direction of the axle. So they're very different in the sense that the radial flux motor need an iron core, but an axial flux motor may not need an iron core largely because all the wires are very close to the magnet itself. And I'll explain to you later why this is very important. Now, the iron core allows the magnetic field lines to pass through it without much uh, resistance, and therefore all this winding would produce a very strong magnetic effect on the magnet that is on the outside of the motor, causing this motor to turn. Now, this is a three-phase winding. You have the phase A, phase B, and phase C here, whereas this is a can be a six phase winding for which you have A, B, C, and then A, B, C again. And now this winding is going like in a circular fashion and the axial flux motor I'm gonna teach you to build actually is not a circular winding, but it is a much simpler winding that you can build it yourself. Now, before I talk about how to build it, I'm, it's important for you to understand the the reason why magnetic field together with a, ma uh, with a current will produce a force. This is called the amperes or the right hand rule for which you have F, the force that's acting on a wire or a magnet for that matter, uh, is equal to BI, FBI as you may remember it. F is the force that's acting on the wire or the magnet and the B is the magnetic field and I is the current. So. If you have a B field that go this way and the current going out, then you have a force on uh, the magnet uh, in the direction of F. Now, I'm going to explain to you how this is applied. Now, the force here is F is here and I is coming out of the page. The current is coming out of the page and the magnetic field, the north pole coming down uh, to uh, south pole down here is in this direction. So what you have is the if the current goes out of the page, and then you have a magnetic field that is uh, going down, then what you have is a force on the wire that goes into that direction, or a force on the magnet that goes in the opposite direction. So this is the very basic principle of the axial flux motor. Now, the question is, how does it cause the rotor where the magnets are placed to rotate. So you have the north pole of the magnet with the field going down, and then you have the south pole with the field going upward, and then you have the wires on the stator, and the way to do it is to uh, have a wire that has a current that comes out this way, and another current that goes into the page. So this uh, going out is I, the current I, and this going into is minus I. Uh, a little bit of trigonometry, uh, an alternating current is represented in terms of an amplitude, A, and a frequency, F, which is the number of oscillations per second, is the F, and then also uh, the location of the, uh, of the current matters. So if this is X, this X equals zero, and this X equal to lambda, this is called a wavelength, then, what you have is then uh, the time domain function is given by that, okay? So 
is a cosine function in the time domain that is of a particular frequency and in the space domain it has a phase shift that depends on how far away you are from the x equal to zero. Okay, so the, uh, just bear that in mind, this is a function that changes both in time and also in space. So incur a wave velocity. What is velocity? Velocity, for example, you will see that this wave here, according to uh, the voltage, uh, the current in this location is going to move left. Now, the voltage, the current here, go up and down. So the, uh, the direction will be quite different. So when this go up, this go down the current, and like this, okay? So when it's going up like this, if you look at the peak point, it would appear to travel towards the left with a negative velocity because x is in, the, in this direction. So what you have is a wave velocity that has the argument here equal to zero, and if you solve for the velocity, which is x divided by time, then you have from this equation a frequency of the wave, how fast this uh, in terms of hertz, multiplied by the wavelength. The wavelength is uh, practically uh, twice. This is not a wavelength, this is a wavelength, okay? Because this is a pi, pi uh, phase shift, and there's a two pi phase shift here. So it is a wave velocity, the apparent traveling of a wave. We call this a standing wave, because it's just going up and down. Just like when you're doing uh, wave surfing, the water doesn't really move towards the shore. It is the water that's bubbling up and down. Like here, bubbling up and down is the, uh, the current that's bubbling up and down. And in doing so, the, uh, the peak or the crest or the trough is moving at a velocity V that is given by the frequency times the wavelength of the wave, okay, in, in the time domain. The, uh, in the time domain is frequency, in the space domain is the wavelength lambda. Okay, so I hope you understand how a standing wave that's moving up and down actually create a traveling wave with a velocity, which is the frequency times the lambda. Now, this is very important for you to understand how the motor works later. Now, if instead of a two phase, we have three phases, and I don't have three hands to represent the amplitude of the three phases, we have a phase A, which is represented in blue, and phase B, which is represented in yellow, and phase C, which is represented in red, and we go back to phase A, B, C, and so on as we go further down in, uh, to the right-hand side. Now, actually, what you have is that the voltage at A, which is represented in the blue curve, going up and down. In the process, you will see the, the blue curve as if it is moving to the left-hand side as I play this video for you. So you have three traveling waves according to uh, for the, each of the phases, right? So what you have is a blue, but actually at point just going up and down like it's going up and, it's, uh, and so on. And you will find that in the process of going up and down, you have the blue curve moving to the left-hand side at a velocity which is equal to f, the frequency, times the lambda. Now, what does this do? What it does is that the current uh, is moving in and out and that it would react with the magnetic field in a synchronous manner, meaning that if this is a stator, this doesn't move. What is moving is a traveling wave, which is moving to, uh, to, the right, to my right-hand side. So what you have here is that the motor, the, the, the rotor of, of the motor that has the magnet, north pole, south pole, and north pole, would be synchronized with the motion of the traveling wave. Why? Because it's like you're skiing uh, on a, a, a wave, and what you, you have is that this wave is moving, and if you're north pole and you're going downward, uh, you, you usually stay on the same point, and then the wave actually is pushing you to the right-hand side. So that traveling wave that is created by means of three phases on the stator winding actually travels. Even though the stator doesn't move at all, it's the, uh, the movement of the, of the current in the alternating current, three-phase current, that causes these traveling waves to go down, and then the north and south pole will react as if 
it, this is a server on the wave to go forward on the on the crest of the wave. Okay, that's how it works. Now this is a time frozen uh, picture of the phases. Uh, in case A, phase A, you have the red curve, and this is in time uh, and, uh, 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 right now, and about a 120 degree phase shift later, uh, which is uh, uh, the period divided by three, uh, you would have moved, the red curve would have moved uh, forward somewhat, okay? And likewise, you have phase B, uh, which is represented by the blue curve, shifted by 120 degree relative to the red curve. And so the whole thing appears to have moved as you move from uh, the first time, second time, and the third time, and then go back to uh, uh, one, three, uh, one period later. Now that you have understood the theory of a motor, uh, I'm going to tell you how to build it yourself. Uh, here on my right hand side is a wound up uh, stator that create a traveling wave, magnetic wave, round and round this. So instead of going in a straight line to the right, uh, it go around in a circle. And on my left hand is the rotor. So this rotate uh, relative to the stator, obviously not moving, but the traveling wave is going around like a cork. And because the motor, rotor has these magnets, so the cork will kind of locks into the uh, magnets and then it will turn synchronously with respect to the traveling wave that is on the stator winding. Now, I would explain to you how you would uh, build the stator. Uh, I have a video showing that. Uh, now, I have 16 magnets on this uh, step, uh, on this rotor. Now, you know that we have three phases per lambda. A lambda is be between two north poles. So this north, south, and north. So this is one lambda in terms of distance. So in terms of the number of slots, so you have two magnet north and south here, and then you have A, B, C like that. So you, we have a 16 magnet that is placed evenly on a circle. These are round magnet that are one cm uh, long and also, uh, and also one cm in diameter. And you can buy it online. Uh, and uh, these are N52, very powerful magnet. So now I'm going to show you a video to see how you can wind this data. Now the way you do it, uh, this is start, and you start with say this particular slot here, and you do it like it show uh, in a clockwise manner. You always do things on a clockwise manner. Now this is the top side and the bottom side, which you uh, you can just mark an X on that as a top side. So you always go in a clockwise direction. Now after he winded from here to here, uh, he go back to. Uh, to from left to right, and he did all together about 30 windings. Now this is the phase A wire, and then he would go two slots, two slots. So he started with this slot, now you go to the third slot, and then you go again, winding it in a clockwise direction. Now you do all the way to the end, uh, uh, in this case here, and then back to here, and then what you do is that you jump another two slots, all right, and then again, you do a clockwise winding. Now the two slot is right here. So you go this way and then you do 15 uh, such winding. And then afterwards you go back to here and then you go to the next one, okay? Now, it, because of time, I'm gonna show you the end of winding all this stuff. Now at the end, this is the end of the phase A wire winding. So you have about uh, here, you go on. And at the end, you would, uh, this is the end of the phase A winding, okay? So what you do is that, uh, this is the A1, we call the A1 wire, and this is the A2 wire, okay? Just remember that, the beginning is A1 and the end is A2. So we've done 30 turns per phase and they're separated by two slots. Now the next one we do is phase B. So there's a phase B starting and then we just next to A, B, and then we just, it really doesn't matter which one so long uh, you are consistent with the number of jumps that you do each of these uh, 30 turns. All right, so you started a new wire called B1 
and then at the end of the 30 turns here, you jump two slots. So you jump two slots to the third slot, and then you start winding it. In his case here, he started on this side, it really doesn't matter which side you start on, so long you do it consistently in a clockwise manner. Okay, everything has to be clockwise, and all the faces must go uh, in a clockwise direction on the ring, as well as that uh, you have, uh, you know, jumping two slots for each time. Okay, so you it's, it's the second slot, winding this third time for a B, and then you have done uh, thir uh, 30 slots on the uh, second slot winding of the BY. All right. Now, this go all the way to the other end. And so what you have is that you have done the last winding, uh, last slot of the winding. Now, uh, let me just tell you a little bit of number of slots you have. Because you have 16 mat mat, and one mat, one lambda is two mat mat. So all together you have eight pairs of pole. We call eight pairs of pole. So each pair of pole, between each pair of pole, you have three faces. So that would be eight times three, equal to 24 of these slots, okay? So so you jump, uh, okay, so now it's done. You have A1 and A2 and B1 and B2. Now, you continue to wind the third phase now, phase C, and again, you would do it uh, uh, any, uh, just adjacent one of the adjacent slot, which has not been wound, and you keep on doing it, you go around again in a clockwise direction, for the winding as well as the jumping of the slot, always consistently in a clockwise direction, and then you cut the last wire. So what you have is, this is C2. So what you have here is A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1, C2. These are the three uh, pairs of wires for which you would be connecting back to the power source, okay? A, B, and C pairs of wire, okay? So, um, all right. Now, the next thing you do is that you connect these uh, to the power sources. And the way you connect is A1 connects to B, A, A2, and A2 you connect to B1. And B1 goes to B2, and B2 then connects to C1. And C1 connects to uh, C2, and C2 actually go back to A1, okay? So you connect those Y ends like that. Now, the reason why you do that is that we call that a delta mode. Now, there are two ways to, uh, to really empower a motor. And this is called a delta mode for the obvious reason that this is like the, uh, the uh, letter uh, delta in the Greek alphabet. And this is called uh, a, a, a star mode because it looks like a uh, three uh, corner star. Uh, but uh, it's also called Y mode, if in case you just look at it this way, this is like a Y. Now, the phases A, B, and C are like here. So you have A1 going through all this winding, and there are eight, uh, uh, eight uh, slots that you go through. So this has uh, eight times 30 uh, winding per slot, and eight slots, that would be 240 of uh, winding, and then you go to A, we go to A, A1, this A1 will go to A2, and A2 connect to, uh, A1 will connect to A2, and A2 connect to B1, and B1 go through the whole thing, eight slots of 30 turns for each slot, and I go to C1, and C1 connect to C2, and then C2 connect all the way back to A1, okay? So these are the power sources. These are the power sources. In case you connect it by for the uh, motor in the star mode, then actually A1 connects to A2 here, and B1 connects to B2 here, and C1 connects to C2 here, and this is called the neutral, because the current actually, uh, the sum of the current into this node is equal to zero. That's why it's called a neutral. There's no net current coming out of that, okay? So for a free phase, you can either connect in the delta mode or a, 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 a Y mode, and I usually prefer the delta mode because the amount of voltage you have between uh, a, 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 these uh, resistors is larger, twice as large as that between these two. Okay, so that's the reason why. Now, in this video, I'm going to 
uh, show you how to put these things together. Now that we are done with the scatter winding, we would have these wires. This is phase A, this is phase B uh, together, and this is phase C together. And all these wires would be connected in a delta mode, and then we can energize it. Before that, we would need to put together the entire personal air conditioner. Now this is the turbine for the air conditioner for which you have 60 magnet with alternating north-south, north-south pole. Uh, these magnets are 1 cm Di uh, diameter and one cm tall and 52 minutes and we put them together by means of uh, using this and then we stick it down on the bottom side and then we put on the top now that's a the bearing same bearing uh, that you can put on the top and put it together and this is the entire assembly and this is going to be put inside this uh, personal air conditioner on the very top now it's show time, I'm going to show you how powerful this motor is. I have a power supply here setting the voltage at 5 volt exactly. And then the power will go through an electronic speed controller that is shown behind here. And will put out three phases of current. Phase A, Phase B and Phase C that powers the motor here. Now uh, I'm going to start the testing. And so you have the current running beyond 2.5 volt uh, uh, ampere, making a total power of 12.5 volt. And you can see on the speed meter that it's turning almost close to 9,000 RPM. So if you divide 9,000 by 5, it's 1800 volt per 1800 RPM per volt, and that's a pretty strong motor. The uh, KV corresponds to a term describing a motor, which is per volt of power supply, how many RPM it turns, and we have an 1800 kV for this motor. Now that we have a successful motor to drive the turbine for air conditioning, and we have a water tank to cool down the hot compressed air, it will come out as freezing cold air on these sides. So um, it's a very exciting project for me, and uh, I hope that you can learn how to build a motor in case you uh, like to, uh, in the future, we'll post uh, the links for downloading SOLIDWORKS STL file for you to build these things and also as, as well as instruction for that. Until then, I hope you can subscribe to this channel, share with your friends and uh, your classmates and like this video. And I appreciate that very much. Until next time, this is Solomon.